we're here on our Google Hangout, and uh, uh, I want to welcome uh, Bill uh, uh, Lobby to the uh, to the Hangout today. Uh, Bill's an industry expert when it comes to uh, video. He's with Leviton, and Leviton is one of Graybar's providers of material for the HD Base T world. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, video and HD Base T. For you all, all that have not been on a Google Hangout with us before, uh, this is a way that we can be kind of interactive, myself and uh, and Bill, and we can just kind of have a conversation, and you guys can listen into it, and uh, we'll see where it goes. So we just got done finishing a webinar, Bill, about uh, HD Base T. I was wondering if you could give us a little information about how this whole HD Base T uh, system got started. How did what industry did it come from? How did it get going? And how did we get from no HD base T to where we are today? <laughs> okay, Carl. So uh, HD base T was actually invented by Valence Semiconductor. Can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we're fine. Okay, great. So uh, Valence Semiconductor created the chipset to uh, really kind of take the HDMI challenges that everyone had and the increasing bandwidth and actually apply it to category cable. Uh, some of the folks' background were old DisplayPort folks, uh, but anyway, they developed that chipset then, and they really are the the only manufacturer of the HD base T chipset today. So they so developed about, they developed the chipset, but how did they socialize that and get it into our industry? Exactly. So what they did is they created. They went to really their their long term vision was really to be able to send the video as well as the power to the display. So we think of a display where you don't have to plug it into an AC power uh, jack or power uh, receptacle and all you have is a category cable coming in there to give you the power and the video signal, right? So that's where that was their vision. Uh, and that's really where the power over HD base T came about that was always in the design to begin with. So that was the long-term goal. And as they got into it further, they decided well, they need to really partner with the display manufacturers. So they partnered with LG and Sony and all of the big display manufacturers to start with to form what they called the HD Base T Alliance. And that really was, was thought about as how can we get everybody involved in this so that we're all working together to create a sim one single specification for how to do this. So it was uh, 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 turned out to actually to be a huge uh, membership now of 350 or more members that are contributors to that alliance. So uh, they're able to then develop the spec together, they're able to test together to that spec, and they're able to get products out there that can support the technology and also be compatible. So that's been the Valence goal all the time, and Valence is really the driving force then behind the HD Base T Alliance. So how long has the HD Base T Alliance been around? When did it actually get started? Oh man, I don't know the exact date. It's probably been at least six or eight years now. It's been around a long time, and it's just taken the last three or four years to really take a hold. And where they've gained the most ground is actually by going to Infocom. If you're familiar with Infocom, which is kind of the, the big AV industry group, uh, that's where they've uh, taken their uh, you know marketing efforts, if you will, and promoted this technology to everybody out there. And it's been very successful, highly successful. Right, great. Yeah, we... As we think about HD base T, we're talking about the, the transmission of uh, video and audio, and mm -hmm. the most common connector today seems to be HDMI. At least it's becoming very, very prolific. But I understand there's another version of HDMI on the horizon, HDMI 2. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about HDMI 2? Some people have said, oh, there's HDMI with the chipset and the cord or something like that. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about HDMI 2 and what advantage we're going to get with HDMI 2 over the existing HDMI we have today. So the existing HDMI we have today uh, is a kind of a limited bandwidth and a limited support for 4K. So uh, we talked about our HD base T extenders and stuff. They all support 2K by 4K at like a 30 mega, 30 hertz refresh rate. So HD, you know, 1080p 30 and HD 2K 4K 30 are kind of uh, in the realm today. So HD Base D 2.0 is going to bring us up to a 60 hertz refresh rate now. So that's kind of the key thing, and that's why you see the bandwidth jump uh, up uh, from the HD Base T, or sorry, HDMI 1.1 to HDMI 2.0. So that's kind of the that's the big that's probably the biggest bang for the buck there. 
there are some probably a lot of other details, and we can you can get into that um, uh, either on the HDMI.org website or the HDBase-T website. But that's probably the biggest uh, change that we're going to see is that 4K support, because 4K is just like everywhere now. It's fantastic. Uh, earlier, you mentioned to us that uh, and to me that uh, the HDBase-T Alliance, HDBase-T.org, if we want to go see more about that alliance. But we also you also mentioned that IEEE was adopting mm -hmm. a spec. What about mm -hmm. TIA? Uh, great question. Um, I have not heard anything about TIA adopting the HD base T uh, standard uh, as a standard. The HD base T spec as a standard. I have not heard that. I can certainly look into it for you, and I'll get back to you on it. Well, the yeah, great, point great question. TIA is actively involved because we rely on TIA to help us with the True. with the channel and with the permanent link. And yep. so if we get to the edge of the equipment, TIA is actively involved. I was just wondering whether TIA has any activity at all moving beyond the links that we're used to testing and installing. Not that I'm aware of, Carl. All right, great. But I, I will look into it, and I'll get back to you, because that's a great question. Uh, the other question I had, and maybe this is a little bit philosophical, I don't know, but uh, it would seem to me that the transition would move pretty rapidly to IP video. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm wondering, is, is HD base T perceived as being a stepping stone to IP video, or does IP video uh, coexist? And where do we see IP video going? Where do you see actual streaming video, just like TV, just like displays? Uh, I'm thinking about a commercial a commercial application where we have a uh, a display in a lobby, mm -hmm. and we have a and the and the video display is coming via IP. Why not just take IP video, just plug it into the IP port? I don't understand right. how these both fit together. Yeah, I I think so. Right in today, so the the big difference today between IP video applications or solutions. And the HD base T solution is that the HD base T solution is completely uncompressed, so it's a complete full stream, high resolution HDMI signal, high definition signal. When you get to IP, you typically, because of the bandwidth requirements and using Ethernet packets, you typically have to have a codec that's going to do compression. So the quality of this signal is somewhat reduced. Now with the newer codecs, we're seeing that bar being raised all the time. So uh, for now, with 4K resolution capability, you can get a pretty decent IP video uh, using Ethernet. So, great system actually. So, PoE powered, transmitters and receivers are PoE powered, so you put in a PoE switch and you're done. It's fantastic. The transmitters and receivers are powered right off of the switch. Uh, however, you have that degradation of the video because of the compression problem. So, and as we go to 16K or 8K or however we're going to end up, we're going to see more pressure on that. And so you're going to see the uncompressed video capabilities of technologies like HD Base T probably winning, especially in the spaces around like healthcare, uh, medical imaging, those kinds of things, where you really have to have that high resolution. Uh, I think there's, so there's going to be probably a coexistence or, a, if you will, there are going to be parallel universes maybe. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily think one's going to displace the other. For for typical digital signage, I think IP is a great technology. Okay, great. And and, and we when we talk about HD base T, we talk about the five play. Mm -hmm. We always talk about the audio, the video. We talk about the Ethernet opportunity that we have there, and then the power opportunity. Which, by the way, from a power perspective, Leviton has a great solution because you can power from either end, either the receiver or the transmitter. Yes, and sometimes power is only available at the display, and that makes it you know makes it very okay. easy to install these uh, these components yep. to get that video. But the That's last the one, thing. the last one we talk about is control, mm -hmm. and we don't talk about control very much. And I was wondering if you could give us a little information about control, what the applications are, and where control may be useful to us in the cabling industry, for example, and how we can use it to help us with the. Uh, delivering video and audio. So the control piece um, is in there. So uh, the HD base T5 play gives you the ability to either use IR or use um, RS-232. And I'm, I'll stick with the simplest to start with. So using infrared control, 
I can have a DVD player um, in my kitchen, for instance, and I can have my display in my family room. I can then uh, connect a IR receiver and an IR transmitter to my HD base T transmitter and receiver, and now I can take my remote control in my family room and control my DVD player in my kitchen via that IR link. So that's kind of the simplest example. Now that IR link is bidirectional, so I could do just the opposite of that. I could control my TV and turn my TV on and off from my kitchen if I wanted to using that IR pathway. So think of it as a pathway. So all these, these things are, they're extenders. So they take whatever signals you want to put in on one end, it will take it 100 meters further in distance and put it out the other end. And so IR is one of those signals that actually can be transmitted back and forth, as well as the video signals and the audio. So that's kind of the simplest control method, and that's very useful for lots of people. I mean, they want to do that. They want to put their DVD player necessarily, maybe in a rack, in a closet, and now you can control that from your living room via your standard remote control, right? Can you follow me with that one? Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to go a little bit more complex. So let's say that you um, are in a commercial building and you have a conference room where you want to uh, dim lights or you want to uh, draw the shades when you start your presentation. So that's a more of a control application. Uh, we have a sister company, our uh, uh, security and automation division in New Orleans, that actually has a product called Bitwise. And that product is, is a control system. It's a control programmed system now so that when you all go in and turn on power, it sends an RS-232 command from the, through the transmitter to the receiver to turn on the TV. It sends another RS-232 command out to lower the shades and to dim the lights. So that's, a, that's the application. And what you're using the HD base T-Link for is to actually, uh oh, we went dark. Wow. Uh, just what we're talking about, lighting control. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Someone was there uh, programmed your, your lights to turn down. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't but, making enough uh, motion here, so the uh, occupancy uh, uh, detector in the ceiling here, the, it thought our, right. there was nobody in the room. We're got saving it. energy, Bill. There you go. I like that. So anyway, so that would be the other application, and we can use this HD based T-Link then to transmit that RS-232 signal to the other end of the room so that we can then connect to a controller there or to a TV or to a lighting system. So that's the idea of it. Um, and it used a lot for you know, higher end control uh, program functions in like mainly classrooms, conference rooms, auditoriums, places like that where you want kind of this uh, ultimate experience, put it that way. I, the, the, what you just described I think is perfect. We, we talk about building control systems where we mm -hmm. integrate security and lighting control, HVAC, and some of the other building systems. I think maybe we're at that juncture where displays yes. end up being part of the building infrastructure, and maybe yes. a good place to manage the displays is right through your BMS. And yes. you guys, you guys have one at, at yes. Leviton. You have a BMS. Yes. yes. That's yep. very interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, before. So we have we, uh, I don't know if you're, you're aware, but uh, about, gosh, it's probably been three years ago, four years ago, Leviton uh, purchased a company called HII, Home Automation Incorporated. Um, and that's really around security and lighting controls and energy controls within the home. Then we also added to that a company called Bitwise, and that's where we brought in the control capabilities. So now we have those integrated into one division uh, called EMCNA. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, energy management, lighting, and controls. There you go. Well, that's, that sounds like a great solution. Well, I don't want to have a real long uh, Google Hangout today, and I've been asking all the questions. Bill, tell us a little bit about where you think this is all going. Maybe you could look into, look into the Bill Lobby <laughs> crystal ball and give us an idea. What do you, what do you think is on the future for us in the cabling industry when it comes to audio and video? And uh, I'd, like, I'd like to hear a little bit about what you think might be on the horizon for us. Well, you know, we're, we're in the uh, category cable infrastructure business. That's really our business, and it's really exciting for us because we think more and more of these AV signals are going to go on category cable. It's going to be the way to do it, I mean, and it is. So AV bridging, IP video, um, all of those things are, are becoming more and more, uh, I think that's the future. That's where it's going to go. So uh, we, and the challenge then as we see things going forward is as we see these higher and higher bandwidths required for these higher and higher resolutions and frame rates and 
color depth and all the other things that you want to have in this great displays, our category cable infrastructure has got to keep up with that. So we're you know, embarking on category 8 cabling systems to support those new bandwidth requirements. Our connector systems are being upgraded for that. Uh, so you're going to see some of that at Bixi. Uh, I think we're going to see more and more IP video. I think that's an area that we can ex definitely expect to see go up. However, as we see again, a high increased resolution, there's going to be that challenge of supporting that with codecs and with minimal compression. So that's an area that I think there's growth in and there's also going to be challenges in. Um, I, we're members of the HD Base T Alliance, so we have some insight into what's going on there with uh, the, the developments that Valence has. Um, I think you're going to see more and more uh, advancements on the HD Base T front or its alternatives or it's uh, whatever, I, I don't want to say alternatives, but it's next evolution. So I think that's coming. Um, you know, I think it's exciting. I, you know, I, to me, I, I'm expecting here in the next year or so to see my display in my office here be on my wall. So now I've got a big screen on my wall. I've got a 70-inch display on my wall. I no longer need my whiteboard, and I no longer need my display on my desk, and that's how I'm going to be operating in my own office. So that's the vision that I have, is that this is becoming uh, uh, bigger. Uh, these display capabilities becoming going to be part of our life everywhere, not only just in our offices, but also at home. No. Great. Well, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you today, Bill. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Bixie. Um, Absolutely. Oh, I guess Sunday or Monday we'll get together and I'll, well, I'll get some customers over to your booth and see, <laughs> see what you have underneath the shelf over there that you want to show us. But we're really excited about the opportunity we have for video. And I want to thank you very much for spending your time with us today, hanging out with us and talking a little bit about video and the cabling industry. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, too. This has been an experience for me. This is my first little hangout thing that I've done, so I really appreciate it, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk with your customers. It's been a good experience. Any questions that I can answer in the future here, you know, feel free to forward in my direction. I'd be happy to help. We will do that. Thank you, Bill. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.